this van. My last woman had, had, had some had some had some health problems, and and, and the bills were mounting up quickly. One well, of my friends said, "Well, you know that I I, I can make a lot of money making crack." Uh, when they popped me, I was I was I was, I was facing 50 years. I brought it down to 13 for uh, manufacturing and, dis and and distribution. When I got out of prison, I, you know, I thought I'd go right back, you know, right back, right back to the mainstream, you know, go right to work. But then um, a lot of my friends, you know, said we'd love to hire you, but 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 our insurance company uh, didn't think that's, think that that's such a good idea. In the two years I've been out of prison, I've had two heart attacks, two strokes, and four and four major operations. And that's one of them. I, I, I made my money by, by picking up cans and bottles, digging in dumpsters, and I would, I, I would guess I walk about 20 miles a day be, uh, because I go all over town. If you couldn't walk, Suddenly, if you couldn't walk and you were out here in a tent, what would that what would happen? I mean, what would that be like if there was no one around to help you? Well, I, I well one of two things. If I was, if I was able to walk, I, I'd, I'd either starve to death or 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 kill myself. One of the two choices. My name's Sherry Locke and I was born in the area, raised here all my life. I was born at St. Joe Hospital and was raised in the Eddyville area. My mother was a school teacher, my father was a farmer and I was a school teacher and sales manager at a television station, a general contractor. Now I'm a pastor and an antique dealer and manager of a soup kitchen. My name's Gary Smith, pastor of Living Water Church, Abbey, Kiowa and uh, help at the soup kitchen. I've been a Christian all my life. I went to church every Sunday with my grandmother and mother, and, um, uh, but it wasn't until recently that I really, really, really started a relationship with God. The whole soup kitchen idea came of a dream that I had on December 29th of 2013, and that dream was so real, so tangible that you could taste it, you could touch it, you could see it. And by morning, when Gary met me on the truck at 9 a.m., he asked how my evening was. I said, I think we're to start a soup kitchen. And he paused a moment and he looked at me and he said, okay, but you'll have to lead on this one. Well, Sherry kind of sprung it on me that uh, she had had a dream and that uh, she felt like that we were supposed to be, uh, uh, we are involved in other ministries and so she felt like that we were just being called into something new and uh, so anyway I said, well I guess I'm game, you know, let's go for it. In the dream we saw two, I saw two uh, buildings and it seemed most like the buildings that were the former Brody store for men and the Promise Center next door. And when we priced those, they were out of our budget. Um, we were thinking about it. Uh, we were talking about how we could do that. And um, we were going down Richmond Street and I actually fell asleep. It was odd, but I fell asleep and I I had another dream that I was to make a much lower offer on the building. I did offer the amount that was in the dream and the, my realtor said, Sherry, we can't do this. We can't waste their time. And I was like, well, don't you by law have to run it by them? And, and he said he would. I, uh, in the meantime, we felt led to purchase the Promise Center. We purchased the Promise Center and then I believe Within a couple days, they took the very low offer that we closed on the building and they said, 
by the way, you know, it also comes with the building in back, which is the building that the soup kitchen's in. It's just the right size for utilities to be manageable, and it's just the right size. It's perfect. It's just how it was in the dream. First thing we had to do was it, it didn't have uh, the smaller building in back. We decided that was going to be the soup kitchen, and we decided to uh, see what it would take to get it electrified, to get it up to code, to get it so that uh, we could get enough uh, electric in here to run ovens and stoves. So we called an electrician and he gave us a bid of 37000 to which I looked at Gary and said, what have we gotten into? And uh, the next person that came in said he was there to take a look at our electricity situation. He had taught the master electricians here in town. And uh, yes, we did need this, and yes, we did need that. And we needed everything they said. And when I said, well, what should that cost? He said, do you think that I can charge you? Do you think I can charge the Lord that's done so much for me? And he was sent on that, on that basis. And that's how this thing has rolled. God was working mightily in people. He was telling people to come to us and, and to bring things. Uh, our air conditioning came that way. Licensed people. We, uh, we at, he specifically told me in this dream to ask for nothing, and he's made us ask for nothing, not one thing. Even the counters made out of doors. The walls are covered with doors and windows. made the awnings out of used uh, lumber and stretched it with fabric from up the street at the quilt shop and the guy across the street did the stencils on them and uh, it it all turned out just like the dream we did the porch railing up above and we did uh, the skylights and the faux the faux sky it's always sunny in here our ladder rack our is our pan rack our ladders our pan racks and everything was supplied everything was supplied I was given this commission to do, I had either two or three digits in my bank account on that particular day. And I, I said, this is impossible, this is impossible to do. But nothing's impossible for the Lord. And, and the thing is, He made sure that we just had everything. We don't have the money to do what we need to do today. And we would have the discussion that, well, he didn't give us this commission to take us down the tubes. And every time we used our own money, it seems like our money just came back in in a greater amount. We've, we've had to dedicate a whole lot of the year to this instead of our business. And yet our business has flourished and we've had the best year we've ever had. And even this winter, when I didn't, I thought that my job was to build the soup kitchen. I did not have it in my head that I was going to be cooking at the soup kitchen. And it was always at the right time. There was one day that I uh, said, I don't know what we do about this concrete out here. It just looks awful. There was big holes. And I said, I can't requisition a new alley or street. And the next day, uh, they dug the concrete up and replaced it and right in front of the kitchen and I was like that was random <laughs> but it happened I mean and it turned out there was a gas leak that they had determined there but um, and that's why they did that but it was just thing after thing you know, no matter what we what we wanted or what we spoke it 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 ended up coming in within a couple days Sherry and I just kind of took off because we felt like that's the, what the Lord called us to do, you know. The Holy Spirit was working so hard in this that I felt like I, He was opening doors faster than I could trot down the hall to, to, to reach them. The community has really embraced this. Facebook, we've got uh, 2,500 members and growing. Uh, people are uh, asking to be members on it every day and then asking how they can help. Uh, we have people from commer with commercial kitchens bringing in uh, um, desserts and, and 
and helping in that way. They've People have been bringing in uh, meats and cheeses and that helps. Uh, they've been eating here. That's been the most beautiful thing is that they've been brave and they've been brave to, to, to look at people the way God looks at people and that is at their hearts and not at what they are, not in a judgmental way. That everybody's eating with each other and that's nice and everybody seems happy about it. And, and they, they donate and that allows us to the next day have our meal. And when people give a little bit more, that helps those people that don't have and are down and out. They can get pretty trapped in that place of down and out. One of the best things I think about when you come into this kitchen is when I said that he put all the right people in all the right places, Pastor Gary is very good at meet and greet. And when they come in the door, they're called hello by name and, and they, they are greeted with a hug and a smile and, and, and Pastor Gary is very good at that. He's the first person they see when they come in the door. Help them get a smile on their face, help them to put their troubles outside the door and help them show them that, they're, that somebody cared about them. That... Although it's beautiful because I have a window and as they come in the door I get to smile at everyone too. So um, I enjoy people, I enjoy being around people and uh, being able to serve people, I guess that's the one thing where I feel like that I can shine the most is uh, I've got a heart, not only for, for all people, you know, everybody that comes through that door, I don't care whether they're a doctor, a lawyer, or an Indian chief, they all need to be treated with the same respect. My name is Tim Gilateri. I, I work here at the Blessed Soup Kitchen. Volunteer, you know, a couple times a week. Uh, you know, I always want to volunteer somewhere, but just never, you know, I never found a place to do it. You know, I tell people volunteering, especially at a place like this, it gives you a feeling of you know, money you just can't buy. You, you go home and it just, it's, a simple, it's a sense of confidence so, that you did something. So, you know, and you make people smile. My name is Stephen White, and I've been coming here to the Soup Kitchen for quite some time, just about since it's been open. And these are wonderful people. They, it's, it's just hard to put into words, really. It, they've been a blessing, truly. We're right now trying to build a prep kitchen in the downstairs of the uh, old Brody store for men. And we want to make a prep kitchen where maybe uh, church groups can come in and prepare off a recipe from our menu and help us move forward without having it be so taxing on just a few. We, we, we embrace people who want to be involved with this ministry and have the goal. We don't want to have just, you know, broth and, and a, a dreary day. We want everybody to have a good meal that'll stick to their ribs. If it's the only meal someone's going to have for the day, it's going to fill them up. We want to, we've got to get more freezers. We've got to get another uh, uh, double oven and, and different things, some stainless steel tables. We've got to get people willing to tile and do different things that we've got the provision for. But uh, God will send them.
to, to all these people. My biggest thing is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.